Hi and welcome to another quick tutorial from Bird GIS. Today we're going to take a quick look at Print Composer in QGIS 2.18. So this is a map that I've got set up already and what I'd like to do is start a Print Composer session so that I can print this map out or export it as an image, whatever. So I'll start a new Print Composer if I leave this blank. It's not going to have a name. It'll just be a default name, so Composer 3. And what I like to do is draw my map onto this page. So if you imagine this white square here is a page of A4 in landscape orientation. I'm going to use this button over on the right hand on the left hand side called Add New Map. Click that and I'm just going to draw where I'd like my map to be. And there it is. We can see that the map as we can see in QGIS is absolutely replicated in Print Composer. Now I'm not too happy with where this map sits so I'd like to move it around. What I'm trying to do is focus in on this area which is Kasuko National Park. So if you go to move item or content we can actually pick up our map and pan around, move it within this square what I'd like to do is zoom into Kasuko National Park. So I'll do that by using the scroll wheel on the mouse. Once I work out which way to go. There we go. And it's almost in there. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So that we can see it properly. I'll have to zoom out a little bit more. So zoom out some more. Okay, it's not perfect, but I could fiddle around with the zoom in this area. There we go. So if you click on item properties, you can fiddle around with the scale. At the moment, it's 186,000. So I would like it to be 150,000. Try that. It's a little bit closer in. That's pretty good. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Now, at the moment, I've got roads uh, going over Kasuga National Park. I don't really like that. I'd like to get rid of that clutter. So one of the nice things about Print Composer is that if I click into the back here, and I switch off major roads and minor roads. When I go back to this and click on it, you can see the roads vanish. So it updates with what's happening in our data view back in QGIS. So that's good. Um, one very useful thing to do often when you're outputting maps is to add a context map. So we'd like to see where Kasuko National Park is in relation to Central America. So for that, I'm going to draw a new map window up here. And again, it has updated with what we've got in our current map window in QGIS. So I'd like to pan that over, obviously, so that we can actually see it. There it is. And you can see also we've got these volcanoes in the background, um, which are a bit cumbersome. I'm going to turn the roads back on as well just to show you something else. So if we turn the roads back on, if I click into my first map which is map 0 and map 1, click onto that, you can see the roads pop back on. So with roads in both maps, uh, that's okay for our initial map over here, the main area. So let's have a look at that and up here we've got a lot of clutter in the context map. Now you'll see down in the item properties here we have this option to lock layers. So if we have map 0 selected and we lock the layers, that means the layers for this window here will actually be locked. Whereas this window up here, they're not locked. So if I want to turn off the clutter in map 1 and if I look at the item properties here, you can see the lock layers is not set, whereas for map 0, the lock layers is set. 
So let's go back into map one. Layers are currently unlocked. So let's turn off all of the clutter. Oh, don't want to turn off the countries, but I'll turn off cities, volcanoes, everything else. Now we've got a nice clean context map. So if I go back to my print composer and I click on this again, we can see that the clutter vanishes. So now that's nice and clean, we can also lock the layers for that. And locking layers means that the layers will stay as they are. We can still zoom and pan our map. We could zoom in if we wanted. There we go. But the layers will remain the same. No matter what I do in the map in the background, turn everything back on, go back to this map. When I click on it, the layers are locked. The padlocks up here, or the padlock up here, which allows us to lock that particular frame. If I lock map one, our context map, you can see that all the handles vanish. And that means that I can no longer pan it. We've got it in a situation that we're happy with and we can't do anything with it. Can't resize it, can't do anything. So there is a difference between locking up here and locking our layers. And if we go and do a quick output, let's export as a PDF and I'll just call this test ZZZ and open this up to play a demo test that, that, that. and you can see in our output here this is a PDF and we have the roads on this map and in our context map no roads at all so it's not entirely intuitive you might think that the padlock up here will lock your layers but you need to get into this item properties and switch on lock layers so that's all for today. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel and get more free QGIS tips. All right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.